Hello, hello, it's Tina Hargaden here, and I'm just super happy that you joined us with Picnic. And uh, I just wanted to walk you through the lesson plan, and then I'll show you a class that I recorded just this week at my friend Shauna Wheeler's class, Robert Gray Middle School. So I'm super excited about this daily lesson plan or this instructional framework because it's flexible enough to invite student voice into the classroom and student creativity, but it's also structured enough so that everybody can kind of calm down and know what's coming next, especially you as the teacher. Just dive right in, shall we? Let's start up here at the top where you see that the cycle that this came from, now this is from the Beyond Year One book, and this is the new way that I'm conceptualizing, like organizing the units, and I on honestly think that I will go back eventually and conceptualize um, the year one book in, in this way. So this unit is narration and so that means that all the guided oral input that we're going to do throughout this unit will be narration. So we'll be telling stories and either creating them as a class or perhaps like doing movie talk or a visual story or maybe potentially some content based information like current events like a story from current events or a story from history. Basically, anything that we'd be doing during this unit would be a narrative, a story. So you see here that this is phase three of this unit, and in this phase we're working on putting in inner thinking and dialogue. And during the lesson, when we get to the shared writing part, you'll notice that I'm working with the kids to model putting in that dialogue, so that hopefully by the end of the unit, when we do our final portfolio assessments, then I'll start to see students putting dialogue into their narratives. So you'll notice that at the very beginning of the class it says norming the class and this happens in English. You know ACTFL doesn't say we have to speak in the language 100% of the time so you know that 90% of the time that ACTFL's not trying to get us to speak in the target language I figure it's a really good chance for me to settle down the class, tell them what the context for learning is, share the objectives with them, tell them what the criteria are for their success for that day, and just generally make sure everybody's ready to start a bunch of interaction in the second language. And then we get to the reading workshop part of class, but we didn't do that today because uh, I got lost on my Shauna's room and so we skipped that. So this would be the part where either kids are just doing their independent reading or perhaps they're doing some independent reading but you're also doing maybe some reading out loud to them and showing them some, some reading moves. Ideally, and in the curriculum materials that I'm working on, the reading moves and the text that you're reading to them would match up with what you're talking about in the shared writing. So for instance, like looking at dialogue or inner thinking um, in a passage from the book. So the guided oral input is basically like the heart of the lesson. This is where you're gonna do something new. You're gonna either teach them something that you brought for them, do a picture talk, movie talk, make a story, make a character, do a calendar talk, do card talk. Today we will be doing card talk. So whatever it is that you're gonna create with the kids, new. Now for me, this used to be like my whole lesson. I would just spend almost my whole lesson doing this, but in order to get through this framework, you really have to keep this down to about 12 to 15, maybe 16, 17 maximum minutes um, in just like a regular non-block class. But it's totally worth it because getting through the rest of this framework is gonna give you a really powerful lesson. In the scaffolded oral review part of the lesson, basically you're just, well, reviewing orally what you just talked about. So in this lesson, you'll see me just ask some questions about what we just talked about to the class. There's other ways to do this. You could use student artwork, play a game, or you could play the question and answer game, have the students talk. But just to keep it simple, most of the time what I do is just ask three, four, maybe five or six questions to the whole class. If you have a particularly squirrely class, this might be a good time to uh, do some kind of a brain break. So like maybe get them up and get them to cross the room and go find a partner to talk to to play the question and answer game. Or if you have a class who struggles with motivation, this is a great time to work in like a weekly packet like John Cowart does and have them write down some answers to some questions. And then at the end of the week, 
John just collects the weekly packets and sort of spot checks. So he finds a couple of random days and just grades one or two things out of there. In the shared writing part, this is where we usually do write and discuss, but there's lots of other things that you can do for shared writing. And sometimes you can actually take the write and discuss and angle it to work on a certain language skill. So you'll see here that the language skill that we're working on is putting the narration in the past, but present tense thinking and talking on the part of the character. So I have some guide words there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to like hammer these words in there or like hold the kids accountable in any way for using those words today. Um, I'm just going to introduce those words and model them throughout this whole phase of this cycle. So I'm just going to, you'll see me in the lesson, tell them in English, like we're going to be working on making this narrative really fun to read by putting in some inner thinking and talking. And so I just wrote um, D, which means said, and pensée, which means thought. And I just had those over on the side of my paper, and then we just tried to put at least one, it would have been nice to have two, but we didn't really have time, um, one or two of those words into our write and discuss for the day. In the shared reading, I generally always do two reading options, which I just really love. One is that I just read it back to them in the language. And this is because during the write and discuss, we were just kind of going back and forth and discussing it as we were writing it. And so it's a good chance for the kids to actually just hear the uh, piece read in its entirety as like an actual text. And then I always really love to do the choral translation and I make them do it word by word because as they're translating word by word, even if it sounds strange in English, it reveals places where they don't know what things mean. And it shows me some places where I can sort of teach into their confusion. And that's a really powerful place to teach. So in this lesson, you'll see me pointing some things out to the students that they sort of hesitate on or seem to have some questions about. So as they're doing that choral translation, I don't actually translate with them. I used to do that, but then I realized that if I just listen to them, I can see some places into which I can teach. And so that's a really great way to just kind of do some pop-up grammar. Then afterwards, I generally ask the students, like, did you guys notice anything about the language? And sometimes people will call things out or have questions. And this is a great place for the kids who really like grammar to get their grammar fix for the day. And then there's lots of other reading options that you can do. However, we only have time to do these two. And if I only have time to do two, these are the two that I do. If I have a little bit more time left in the class period, this is a great chance to go and do some reading from the back of the room and maybe combine that with a little bit of reader's theater. So at the end of the period, it's time for student application and formative assessment. So I had planned to do two things, but I only had time to do one. And what I really like about putting the shared reading and the student application and formative assessment here at the end is because, well, A, you have to get there in the lesson to be able to read and apply what you read and wrote about, learn that day, um, but also because these are very flexible parts of the lesson. So there's tons of different reading options that you can do, like if you have extra time to sort of fill, or you can just keep it basic. And the same thing with the student application and assessment. So today I just did some like student application and it's like very informal assessment where I was just listening in to what they were saying. So you'll see the students playing the question and answer game and I'll ask them some questions and they'll give each other some answers to their partner about things that we discussed and wrote and read that day. All right, well, it's almost time to start that lesson. So let's get going. Last time we're gonna do that, right? <laughs> um, so uh, Miss Wheeler invited me to come here because I have been writing this book for teachers, and I want to do some things with you guys because I don't teach French and Spanish anymore; I teach English. Um, so I want to do some things with you guys just to kind of practice um, some of the lesson plans that are in this book. So what we're gonna do today is you're gonna draw a quick sketch um, of a time that you. Okay, there's two parts of it. So on the front, it's kind of like a little, we're gonna make like a little tent type of thing. That's beautiful, right? Um, so on the front, you're gonna put your name, because unfortunately, I don't know if your name, oh, you probably wanna know my name. Um, it's Ms. Hargaden. So on the front, you're gonna put your name. I'll just go ahead and make one myself. So Hargaden. 
Can you see how big I'm writing my name so everybody can see it? And then on the front, I'm going to put like a place I like to shop. We're going to talk about shopping. We're going to tell a story about somebody shopping, hopefully an interesting shopping trip that somebody has gone on. So on the front, I'll just put a place I like to shop. Personally, I don't really love going shopping. Most of the things I buy, I get them on the internet, on Amazon. Do you notice how quickly I did that sketch? Yeah, I can actually draw, but like my goal here is to do the sketch in like two minutes, okay? So you're only gonna have like two minutes to do this, and we're totally not gonna judge you for your drawing. We're gonna judge you if you don't get finished in two minutes. So uh, quick and simple is what you're looking for. So on the front, someplace I like to shop. And then on the back, I'm gonna put like just a little sketch of like a story, like something I remember that actually happened to me in the past when I was shopping. Now it could be at this place or it could be at a different place, but it just so happens that it's at this place. So one time I was ordering some, uh, I don't remember what I was ordering for my class, but it was supposed to go to the school. And so I got this box in my classroom and the kids were like really excited because it was supposed to be something for the class and so they like delivered the box and I opened it up but it didn't have the thing that I had ordered in there um it had this package of beard dye <laughs> like for guys with a beard that's like turning gray so I guess some of them like dye their beard I didn't even know that was a thing so we got this box of like beard dye and uh, the kids were like, whoa, dude, beard dye. And like everybody wanted the beard dye and I was like, you can't have the beard dye. And have you ever had a teacher who has like kind of like a talking animal that you like pass, like a stuffed animal or something when you're doing like a circle and you're like, I don't remember. So anyway, on the front, I just drew a quick sketch of Amazon. That's the place I like to shop. And on the back, I just drew a super quick sketch of this uh, weird shopping experience that I had with the beard dye. So before you come get a marker and some paper, just tell your partner, somebody by you, what is the place you like to shop at, and what's a crazy story that's ever happened to you, or a memorable story of something that you did when you were shopping at that place or somewhere else, okay? So just go ahead and tell them, and then we'll draw. Please. Do I do this like this? Ooh, ooh, that's very creative. Did you buy poop? No, we were at the Apple store, and then the dog was in the middle of the clean Apple. Oh, my gosh. I got your dog. Huh? Zero, Max, class, rook acting, la, <laughs> la carte, <laughs> le papier de Maya. Okay. Okay, Maya M. What did I say? Maya M. Le magasin Apple. Maya M. Faire du shopping. Faire des achats. Dans le magasin app. Hey, class, qui? M. Okay, Maya M. Faire du shopping. Dans le magasin app. Et qui? D'autre. M. Faire du shopping. Dans le magasin Apple. Une personne. Oh, deux. Per okay, qui? Apple Bijou. <laughs> okay. Very Samsung interesting Games. that you mentioned that. Samsung Gang, Samsung Gang. <laughs> um, class. Oh, God. Regardez. L'histoire. What is that? Le magasin Apple à Portland. Just the Washington Square one. À Beaverton. Dans le, ooh, dans le centre commercial de Washington Square. Okay, Maya a été dans 
le magasin Apple. Et Maya, qu'est-ce que tu voulais acheter? Qu'est-ce que tu voulais acheter dans le magasin Apple? Me and my dad went to get a new phone. Ooh. Okay. Maya ate dans le magasin Apple à Washington Square. Et Maya voulait acheter un mobile. An iPhone. An iPhone. This? No. No. <laughs> wheat. Yeah. Wheat plus ou wheat? Just the regular. Okay. Maya était dans le magasin Apple avec sa maman ou son papa. Maya, tu étais avec son papa, ton papa ou ta maman? My dad. Elle était dans le magasin Apple avec son papa, son père. Et elle voulait acheter un iPhone, un mobile, wheat. Dans le magasin Apple, il y avait un chien. Chien en anglais. Chien en anglais. Chat en anglais. Hamster en anglais. Hamster. Elephant en anglais. Ok, classe. Il y avait un chien, un chat, un éléphant ou un hamster. Hamster. Non, il n'y avait pas d'hamster. Ok. Il y avait un chien. <laughs> Et Maya <laughs> Okay, Maya a regardé le chien Et Maya a pensé What did I say? Thinking. Okay, Maya a regardé le chien. Maya a pensé, huh, un chien dans le magasin. Ça, c'est bizarre. Et classe. Le chien n'était pas un bon chien. C'était un chien terrible. C'était un chien puant. Et classe, le chien terrible a fait caca dans le magasin. Et Maya, le caca sentait bon ou terrible? Acheter le iPhone 8. 
Mais il y avait du caca. Et le caca, purée. Donc, Maya, tu voulais un iPhone et tu as acheté le iPhone ou tu as quitté le magasin. Want to ask her? Maya, tu as acheté le iPhone 8 ou tu as quitté oh, oh, le, le magasin? What I ask Maya? <laughs> oui, oui, oui! This is a normal question. <laughs> Une question normale. Okay, Maya. Dans le magasin, il y avait du caca et le caca pué. Et tu voulais un iPhone 8. Tu as acheté le iPhone ou tu as quitté le magasin? Maya, tu as acheté le, le iPhone? We bought it and then left. <laughs> Class, Maya et son papa. Maya et son père ont oh. avec le nez fermé. Maya et son papa ont oh. payé le iPhone et et classe. Maya et son papa ont oh. payé le iPhone et pensez classe. Est-ce que Maya et son papa ont quitté le magasin lentement ou rapidement? What I ask you? Oui, oui, pensez classe. Il y avait du caca. Il y avait du caca et le caca pué. Et Maya a payé le iPhone. Et Maya et son papa ont quitté le magasin lentement ou rapidement. Do you guys know what I'm asking? Pensez! Imaginez, classe! Maya et son papa ont quitté le magasin lentement ou rapidement? Rapidement. Oui! Ça, c'est normal. Turn and tell somebody near you, what would you do if so? Like, would you have. Okay, I think it's very dedicated that you bought the phone. Would you have stayed and bought the phone, or would you have just ran out of there and come back later? Tell somebody near you, what would you have done? Alright, we're going to take a little quiz in five seconds. Five. Quatre, trois, merci, classe. Fantastique. Deux, un. Zéro. Out. Okay, class. Quatre questions. Shut your pee right down the couch. Numéro un. Le magasin Apple était le magasin Apple à Portland ou le magasin Apple à Washington Square Mall? Oui. Numéro 2. Myra, or Maya. My daughter's name is Maya. Maya. Maya était dans le magasin Apple avec son papa ou avec son chien? Oui. Le chien était le chien de Maya ou pas? C'était pas le chien de Maya. Maya était avec son papa. Numéro 3. Le caca. Santé bien? Yeah. 
Upiwe. Maya, le caca, santé, bon ou puree? Good. It's poop. Oui. Class, le caca normal, puree. Numéro 4. La question finale. Maya, a payé. Maya a acheté et payé le iPhone ou Maya, or Maya a quitté le magasin vite. Elle a payé le iPhone ou quitté le magasin? Classe, elle a payé le iPhone ou non? Et après, elle a quitté le magasin. Lentement ou vite? <coughs> Classe, elle a quitté le magasin lentement ou vite. 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 Oui, rapidement. Très un peu rapidement ou très rapidement. Très rapidement. All right, kids, we're going to write. Or at least I'm going to write. You don't have to write if you watch and listen. But if you don't watch and listen, we're all going to have to write. And then I'm going to have to grade your work. Because I don't want Miss Wheeler to have to grade your work. So I'm not going to be happy about to grade all your work. And you're not going to be happy if you have to write. So turn to somebody near you and be like, all you got to do is watch and listen. Don't make us have to write. Tell them that right now. Don't make us have to write. Don't make us have to write. Um, all right, you guys, we're going to write about, about three sentences to tell the story. Thank you, Evelyn. You're a good influence. Um, so, when we're telling the story, we're going to be focusing on, like, saying some things that Maya was thinking. So, wait, that's English. Um, so, things that she was thinking. I'll say. Um, and maybe some things that she was saying. So, deep. So we're going to try to put these in there because like when, when you tell a good story, like you, it's a good thing as a writer, your language arts teachers might have told you, um, it's a good thing as a writer to like say what people were thinking and what they were saying. Okay, le tit. A glass tit. En anglais. Woohoo! <laughs> title. Fantastic. Okay, class, one teacher. Okay, le titre. Okay, class, pensez. Le caca ou le iPhone 8? Le caca? <laughs> le iPhone 8. Ok, le caca. Le caca. Ou, ou, classe. Le caca fantastique ou le caca puant? Le caca fantastique. Et puant. Le caca fantastique et puant. Ok, Maya. M A. Maya, we don't know. M A. Y. A. Ok, Maya était dans le. Magasin. Et classe, quel magasin? Classe, quel magasin spécifique? Apple. Apple. Oui. Maya était dans le magasin <coughs> Apple avec son chien ou son père? <coughs> avec son chien, classe? Le chien était le chien de Maya ou pas? Ok, pas avec son chien, avec son papa, son père. Ou classe, son papa 
Who saw Pear? Pear. This kid has got a really loud voice. We're going with Pear. My ET on a magazine apple avec son Pear. Son papa. Son Pear. Et elle voulait acheter un class. Maya voulait acheter un MacBook ou un iPhone 8. A MacBook, Maya, ou an iPhone 8? An iPhone 8. No, an iPhone. No. A chien a fait ou classe. Le chien a fait un petit caca ou un grand? Grand ou énorme? Énorme! Un chien a fait un énorme caca. Fantastique ou puant? Fantastique et puant. I don't understand the joke. Fantastique et puant. It's the new Apple product. Et puant. Not again. An eye caca. Look at that fantastic if you want Maya? E.T. dans le magasin Apple avec son père, son papa. Et elle voulait acheter an iPhone 8. Mais un chien a fait un, cap, un énorme caca, fantastique et pure, un eye caca. Class, Maya a pensé que c'était normal ou bizarre. Bizarre. Maya a pensé. Et Maya, tu as pensé, wow, ça c'est normal ou ça c'est bizarre? C'est bizarre. Bizarre. Maya a pensé, comme, c'est bizarre. Ça. Hum, mm, classe. Maya a pensé, comme c'est bizarre, ça. Point ou point d'exclamation? Oh, point d'interrogation. Oh, comme c'est bizarre, ça. All right, you guys, I'm going to read this to you and then we're going to read it together in English. Okay, le titre. Le caca fantastique et puant. Maya ate dans le magasin Apple, à Washington Square Mall, avec son père, son papa, et elle voulait acheter un iPhone 8. Mais un chien a fait un énorme caca fantastique et pure, un eye caca. Maya a pensé, hmm, hmm. All right, we're gonna translate this together. And the rules are you have to translate and you have to stay with me. And if it's in like a weird order in English, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna say the way it comes in French, okay? So sometimes the order is a little different. It might sound a little strange in English, but it'll help you, you guys to like understand how all these words work. Okay, ready, set, go. Know, like all of us. Ready? You don't have to talk loud. You can whisper, but give it a try. Ready? Set? Go. Title. The truth. Fantastic. And skinny. Nicely done. Ready? Set? Ready? Set? Go. Maya. So what's this? 
Um, what? Mm -hmm. So she what? Where, 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 where was she? I'm watching this on the apple store. All right, let's back up and just start over here. Ready, set, go. My so this is dad. So what's like? This is this is actually like father. So what's what's the like dad in French? Papa. So let's let's say father because it's a little more formal. So we'll just back up here. Ready? Set? Not everybody's ready. That kid's not ready. He's almost ready. Getting there. Wait on one kid. Thanks, kid. All right, ready, set, go. Oh, we're going to start with with, okay? Ready, set, go. With her father. Her father. And she. So you notice in English we have to say two words here. It's two by. This little e part is the like this er is the two part. So ashit is like the by and ashit is two. Let's just back up to where it says she and she wanted. Ready, set, go. And she So I heard some people saying that, and this is made, or did. But I think we would probably say made with a big poop, we made a big poop. All right, so let's go back to a dog. Ready, set, go. We, we lost a couple kids. So we're gonna go back to the word poop. Kids, we're gonna start over with the poop. Ready, set, go. I caca, I poop. I don't know, maybe it's a French brand. Maybe it's I caca. Okay, ready, set, go. Maya has. So this is the same thing as this, right? Has made, has. In what? French, it's, we, usually when we talk about the past in French, when we talk about things people did, there's two words, whereas in English, there's like usually just one, she thought. In French, we have to say she has thought. So let's just start over with our Maya's name. Ready, set, again. Maya. Maya. <laughs> okay, so maybe you guys have never seen this before, but this means... Well, that actually kind of means light. I mean, it literally like, means light. But this is just kind of like in French how you say something when you're like, whoa, that's weird. Like, this means, whoa, that, is, that right there is super weird. Or it literally means, whoa, that's weird. Because if it was super weird, it would say super. So just to break this down the way it works in, in English, it's like, that is weird, that. That's just how you would kind of say that in French. Like, wow, oh, it was awesome. That's so weird. So do you guys want to read it like in all the English words or do you just want to say that's so weird right there? That's so weird. Yeah, that's what, and the, the saw is like that. So like, you could just say, come, c'est bizarre. Like, that's so weird. But like, come, c'est bizarre, ça is like that, yeah, that over there. That right there is so weird. The chair? <laughs> all right, Miss Wheeler, how much time do we have? Ooh, we only have five minutes. All right, well, we're gonna play the question and answer game. Here's how it works. Um, all right, so. Okay, so this is how it works. You're about to get up and you're not going to talk. This is a big challenge. And you're going to take seven steps. We're going to take seven steps together in silence. So if you're up there, you're gonna have to get down. And then when you get when we get to the end of seven steps, you're just gonna look around and the person that's near you is 
So if you don't want to leave your friends, you just take small steps. Um, the person who's right beside you is going to be your partner. And then, without talking, you're going to decide who's partner A. That means you have to use body language. Kind of like, and then partner A is going to raise their hand. So take a deep breath because you're about to take a little trip. Okay, class. Shh. Silence. Okay, levez vous. Okay. Marche. Okay. Un. You're going to walk. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept. Et class. Okay, partner A, levez la main. Partner A. Partner A, levez la main. Okay, partner A is going to hear a question and then they're going to say to partner B the answer. Partner B is going to do like this. They're going to count the words the partner A said. That's your job. Tell them how many words they said. And if they get tired of talking or they think they can't say anything else, you guys have been in French all year long, so you can probably say more than you think. If they get tired and they quit, partner B is going to do like this to encourage them to keep talking. And the partner B might even point up there and be like, you can say some of that stuff. You can cheat. Okay? So partner A, I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to tell partner B the answer. Partner B, count their words and encourage them. Okay, partner A. Écoutez, moi. Et partenaire B. Écoutez, partenaire A. Ok, partenaire A. Maya, voulez acheter un MacBook ou un iPhone? Maya, voulez acheter un MacBook ou un iPhone 8? So we're going to try our best to say it. Santé bon ou le caca pué? Le caca santé bon ou le caca pué? Santé. Santé. 